Good morning, guys. So we are here at Lake Trillium or hiking to Lake Trillium. Last night after work, I decided to come out to Mount Hood, park in the, like the, this overnight parking. And this morning we're gonna hike it. It is about a mile or so long from where I'm at to the actual uh, lake itself. It's supposed to be frozen over, so really beautiful. I've never been here in the summertime, but they say it's awesome and the views are great, especially uh, Mount Hood, so. So, you're wanting to do van life. You're seeing all this craze on Instagram, all this craze on TikTok, social media, it's everywhere, about this awesome lifestyle of these people, you know, doing van life. Just traveling the world, living as a minimalist, and as a nomad, right? And you are wanting to do it now. That's awesome. Honestly, it's really cool. Shows that you have an adventurous spirit, and kudos to you, honestly. So... Before you even start looking at a van, going on Facebook Marketplace and seeing what kind of vans you like and seeing how you want your van to be, there are three things, three important things that you need to know before even shopping for a van, before even looking at vans. Three things that you need to know in order to continue this dream or to continue to entertain the idea that you want to live in a van. Not only is this gonna make it more realistic for you, but it's also gonna help you plan out for the future steps, right? Because living in a van is definitely a huge change. It's a very big change. And so it's best to, you know, take it one step at a time. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't, don't go out there and buy a van and, you know, say so you're gonna do it on a whim because that's not a good idea. I wouldn't recommend it. I definitely would not recommend it. So the first reason should be your why. Why do you want to become basically borderline homeless, right? It's very important to know. And let me tell you mine. So my why was because I'm young. You know, I don't have any responsibilities. I'm single, I haven't settled down yet. So it was a perfect time to do something like this without having such a great impact on my life, right? And then also, I just want to grow old and tell people why I would never do something ever again versus why I never did something. I know that reasoning might, might not fit all situations, but in this one, it fit me, right? So why? Um, another part was because I want to travel, right? You know, I want to see things people have never seen. And I just want to live on the edge and just, you know, live my life to the fullest, challenge myself and really develop my personality or, you know, develop character. Be able to be comfortable on my own, completely alone, you know? I think that's something that I really want, so. And then also, my last reason is financials. Um, I wanna get ahead of the game. You know, living in a van, you save money, especially here around the Portland area. So my rent was about 1700 a month. And that's not including utilities, 1700 a month. So much money. And you know, being able to live in a van is gonna help me continue to save for traveling. And even the next step, if one day I wanna settle down, buy a house, I don't know, get married one day, cool. I'll have a great savings to do that or maybe who knows upgrade van maybe she wants to be a van life or two i don't know right now the second thing you need to know before you even start again before you even start looking at vans is your scope how long are you planning to do this are you gonna do it full time are you gonna do it part time two months out of the year what's your scope and that's going to affect not only the, the third reason but also what kind of van you're looking for you know if you're in it full time you, all, you obviously want something that maybe you can stand up in because it's a pain in the butt with my toyota heist i can kind of stand up in but i'm kind of still slouched but it's good it's all good like i can put up with it but i can't even imagine something that i can't stand up in it'd be a pain in the back not in the butt in the back it'd be pain in the back so how long are you gonna do it? What's your goal? What's, what's your scope? What's your plan? Um, so me, personally, I'm doing it full time. I decided to just move and complete into a van and yeah, living in a van 24 seven. So 
That's me. But yes, how long are you gonna do it for? What is your scope? You need to know that. That's gonna affect, again, what kind of van you end up choosing, what kind of stuff you might need. And then also, number three, how are you gonna support van life? So number three is how. How are you gonna support yourself when living in a van? Although you might not have as much overhead, you know, which means you can work less, I guess, theoretically, you still need to support yourself. You still have insurance, you still have maintenance, you have gas, you have phone, internet. Um, you still have bills, I still have bills. And so you need to find out how you're gonna support yourself. Again, my example, so I work in IT. Um, I work as a contractor, I'm a network engineer. And yeah, so you know, just working these temporary jobs and saving up money, right? And so that's my plan. And honestly, if someone would ever talk to me about or ask me if IT is a great place to be in, yes it is. You don't need a college degree. Honestly, you can get Bible certifications or self-study that are very cheap and honestly can really help you um, do van life. There are so many remote jobs right now. There are so many opportunities. So anyway, if you guys want to learn more, comment in the comment section below and let me know. And I could definitely, you know, definitely make a video um, on how to get into IT and more information. So let me know. But how are you going to be paying the bills? Are you going to be working these odd jobs everywhere? Are you going to be working some remote job? I mean, there's a lot of them, especially because of the pandemic, right? So remote job, are you going to be a YouTuber? Like, what are you going to do to pay the bills to put food in your van? <laughs> to, you know, buy clothes, to change your tires, change the oil. How are you going to do that? Do you have a big savings? That's really cool. Maybe you don't have to work because you have savings. So, but you need to know how. How are you going to do it? And these three questions, I, I say they're very important because it's going to make the whole idea of van life more realistic for you. Um, it's going to help you see what you need to do and what you need to adjust in your life to make it possible. And realistically speaking, it's going to actually help you realize whether this idea of living in a van is maybe just an idea, maybe just like an impulse or if it's actually something that you're really considering and doing. So, with the tips that I'm gonna start putting on this channel and the vlogs of my personal experience going into van life, as well as my adventures in van life, hopefully I'm gonna inspire you if you really want to get into something like this, but also educate you and have you firsthand see what mistakes you can avoid that I made, right? Make it, do it better than what I can. And, you know, hopefully I'll see you on the road one day or something. So far it's been a beautiful day. There's not a lot of wind right now. The sun is out. I think it's gonna get like to about 50 degrees today, so. Yeah, and honestly, like the snow isn't even that icy right now. It's not that cold. It's kind of more slushy, which is good because I ended up buying these uh, snow boots on Amazon and they were, it was a joke, man. So looks like a lot of people came into the trail without any snow shoes. And so I'm just using my regular hiking boots. I'm doing fine. <laughs> and I had a close call a little bit ago. So I was flying my drone and I don't really know all the functions just yet, like active track and all this other really cool stuff that they put into it. And so I actually crashed my drone. Like I did like this function where it just kind of like it hovers around you. And I didn't realize I was gonna do it that wide. And so little do I know, I see my drone like head straight for a tree. And I'm like, no. And so I try to like maneuver out of it too late. It wasn't a hard hit. It wasn't a hard hit. The propellers and everything are okay. But lesson learned, you do not fly your drone in kind of a crowded place if you don't know how it works. Lesson learned. All right, guys, so I am like about to get to the lake right now. And I can already see why it's such a craze. Why it's so crowded here in the, in the summer times from what I hear. But I can kind of see the mountain right now. I can't even wait though. It's gonna be so cool. I've never been here before, obviously.
back hopefully I got enough drone shots to show how awesome this place is I just chilled out for a little bit I'm telling you today's a beautiful day it seriously is definitely recommend it Trillium Lake I hear it's really pretty in the, in the summertime too but it's very crowded because everybody's camping out here so <laughs> dude I almost like wiped out really bad right now because I'm going downhill and it's a little icy, so I take that back. You do need snowshoes or some kind of spikes or something on your shoes because, man, it is slick. But I almost ate it, like, a couple minutes ago. Like, right in front of this whole group. That would have been embarrassing, dude. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just, like, walking around the side because it's a little more stuff here, so it works. All right, guys, we just got to the parking lot. Definitely got full. More people did come today on such a beautiful day. Even some really nice rigs like that Mercedes right over there. That's like beefed out. And then you got my little uh, heist right here. Pretty much bone stock, but you know, we're, we'll get there little by little, little by little. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching my video. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.